Hi, my name is Margaret Posch. In this video I'm going to introduce you to the scope of variables. The scope of a variable is the segment of the program that can refer to or access the variable. And in Java we say a variable is in scope if it can be accessed from a given code area. So here uh, you can see the different types of variables that we have in Java. Some variables belong to a specific method. Those are the local variables and the parameters. Local variables are declared inside the body of a method. Parameters are declared in the parameter list. There are also variables there are also variables that are not associated with one specific method. Those variables are called fields and they're declared outside of a method and inside of the class. There are two kinds of fields. Instance fields, also called instance variables, and static fields, also called static variables or class variables. Instance fields store data that is specific to a given instance. So for example, if you have three student objects, three instances of type student, they might have certain data like the name, the GPA, the student number that is specific to each instance. This is different for static fields. Static fields are completely independent of any instance. There's only one single copy. And whenever an instance modifies a static field, that change affects all the other instances because they all access the one and only copy. As a matter of fact, static fields don't even have to be accessed through an instance they can be accessed directly on the type. Now let's look at some scope rules. The scope of local variables is from the point where they are declared all the way to the end of the code block, that's the closing curly brace. If you declare a local variable as a control variable in the header of a for loop, then the scope is the whole for loop, both the body but also the expressions in the header of the for loop. Now the scope of a parameter is the whole body of a method, anywhere within the method, but only within the method. And the scope of a field is the entire body of the class. There's one restriction that applies. Static methods have no direct access to instance fields. But that is a different topic. I don't want to get into that right now. Now let's look at some code. In the main method, I create an instance of scanner. I prompt a user to enter the number of stars. I read in the number provided by the user. I print out a label that says so many stars. And then I call method print line of stars that is going to print me one line of stars with the exact amount of stars that I pass as argument. Now if I look at the method print line of stars I can see I'm using a for loop to print each individual star separated by a blank and then at the very end a new line. So let's look at the scope of args. Args is a parameter and we know parameters and scope anywhere in the method. So here you can see args can be accessed anywhere within the method, but only within the method. If I look at input, that is a local variable declared inside the body of main. Input is in scope from the moment it is declared all the way to the end of the code block, which is the closing curly brace. Now this looks exactly like the scope of arcs. And the reason is because my local variable input was declared as the first statement. If I look at a different local variable, let's say number, 
Once again, my rule applies. It says the number is in scope from the place it was declared until the end of the code block, the closing curly brace. And you can see this time the scope is different. In the first two statements, number is not in scope because number has not been declared at that point. So let's look at the scope of n. Once again, we have a parameter. Scope of parameters is the whole method. Or maybe the scope of i. This is the control variable of a for loop. The scope of i is the whole for loop, the body of the for loop, but also the expressions in the header of the for loop. Now this is a different example. This is a simple class called circle, and I want to show you the scope of a field. It has one single field, the radius. It has a parameterized constructor that initializes the radius, the area, and the diameter that returns the calculated area or calculated diameter based on the radius. So here you can see we use the field radius inside the constructor. We also use radius inside the different methods. Radius is accessible, it is available both in constructors and in methods. And that is possible because the scope of a field is the whole class. This was it for now. See you next time.